In today's tutorial, let's do this granny with radiant stripes. That's right, we have one granny square and then the stripes kind of ripple out like a pond from the granny square to the bottom and then the granny square all the way to the top. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. In today's tutorial we are going to do this granny with radiant stripes where we start off with the granny square right in the center here and then we radiant out from the granny square out, out one direction and then from the granny square out into the other direction. So we have to start off with our granny squares first and then we start off. So this pattern is actually relatively easy. You notice that the granny square is not in the equal layer so it's not right in directly in the middle. So we have to just kind of watch where this is going to be placed and how far we go down and then how far we go up and I'll explain that in just a moment. So the granny square is sitting towards the bottom of the bed here just because it's turned this way on the mattress doesn't mean it has to be this way. It can be the other way if you wish and you could also alternate as well. So what you are looking at here is that the radiant stripes are from rows 1 through 25 on this side and on this side it's 1 through 25 times 4. So there's, it's this section times 4. So that's why you're getting all the way to the top here. So you just have to kind of pay attention to that. It's really quite easy. So you have to start off with the granny square in the middle and then we're gonna go in one direction. So if it were me and I were you I'd probably do the bottom first of getting this 25 done and then just worry about doing the top after. So you have to do all the stripes. So once you get a stripe done you have to then just do a single crochet equally all the way down through the side and then we just have to whip stitch the stripes together in order to do that. So that's uh, basically the concept of this particular afghan. So this afghan is the official crochet cruise afghan for Alaska 2016 where we have changed the sizes. We're only going to be doing four panels wide and we're only going to do from rows 1 through 25 in the bottom and then from the granny square we're gonna do rows 1 through 25 only two times so it'll be 50 rows instead of 100 when you get up to here. So it'll be uh, probably around this mark. So we're just trying to uh, just kind of make it fun. We are representing a project Linus on board for doing something fun and do something charity related while we're enjoying a crochet cruise together. So for crochet cruisers you can go to the crochetcruises.com website and we have all the information on what you need to know if you want to participate in the particular project. We're asking all crocheters that show up on the ship please bring at least one strip with you and if you have time please do more than one. And our goal is 30 Afghans for Project Linus for August of 2016. So this project is relatively easy. I'm gonna start you off. We're gonna do the granny square together. It's probably the most complex and then we're gonna start you off with the stripes. You can change the colors as often or, or as little as you wish. You do have four different colors that are being used and there are two different color schemes. So you see that this scheme matches this one here and it, I think it matches the one on the far side as well in this scheme and this scheme match each other. Just because it has it all organized like that you can have a lot of fun with doing um, your own kind of color schemes. Um, you can change the colors as often or as little as you wish. So without further ado let's grab our crochet hook today. I'm going to substitute with a five and a half millimeter size I crochet hook today but if you are using Karen Simply Soft I'd recommend obviously a size H five millimeter. This pattern also includes the crochet diagrams that are on the very back and we're going to start off here and so you can see that this is one strip that is coming down to the base of the bed and then this is the other strip. So we do the strip first, come back and then do the other strip on the other side going all the way to the top of the bed as well. So either way however you do it it's up to you but just know that the strips from the bottom uh, from the bottom of the granny going all the way to the base is a different strip and then this one is a different strip. So it's not doing it all together like it would like a regular uh, granny square once you get to that level. So what we have to do is get our granny square done first and that's next up. So let's grab your yarn and let's get started. So I'm grabbing my Bernat Super Value yarn today. This is my substitution a size I 5 millimeter, uh, 5.5 millimeter but if you're using the pattern you can use Karen Simply Soft 5 millimeter size H. Let's create a slip knot and let's uh, chain five. So one, two, three, four and five. Let's insert our hook into the beginning chain, yarn over and pull through to create the center ring of your granny square. So let's uh, make sure that when we go to do the next step that we keep this string around the ring so that we can bury it underneath. Let's move on to the first set of instructions. 
Round number one, we are going to chain three. In this case, it counts as a double crochet as per the instructions. And we have to double crochet around the center of the ring 15 times. So if this counts as a double crochet, it's a total of 16 of these posts that will be going all the way around. So just double crochet a total of 15 times all the way around the ring. And we'll meet you here in just a moment. When I'm counting all the way around, I just wanna count the posts. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. I want a total of 16 of these. So just make sure that if you're running out of space, this is just sitting loosely around a ring. You can just expose more ring just by pulling it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. I want a total of 16 of these. So let's do 13, 14, 15 and 16. So now that I have verified that I have my 16 in here, just insert your hook into the top of the first chain three, yarn over and pull through the first slip stitch and then that will conclude that off. And then what I want to do then is that I wanna trim out this piece of yarn here and therefore I will not have to worry about that bothering me as I crochet all the way around. Let's move on to round number two. So round number two, very, very, very easy. We're going to start off with chaining a four. So one, two, three, and four. So as per the instructions, this counts as a double crochet plus chain one. Think about it for new crocheters here. When I chained three, it counted as a double crochet. This time I counted a chain four. Therefore it's one double crochet plus a chain one. So you come to the next stitch and you are going to double crochet. Like so. And then chain one come to the next stitch and then chain one. And what I want you to do, continue to that same pattern going all the way around. So double crochet in, chain one, double crochet in, chain one. Please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. You should have a total of 16 of these posts. So you should be able to count those and I did count those and I have that done. Make sure you chain one first and then just join it to the third chain of the beginning. Okay, so we chained four and so therefore you join to the third one so that you can continue to maintain that chain one space. So we want to finish off this yarn here. We're gonna change color. I'm just gonna trim it and I'm going to pull it through and changing the colors of anything is subject to what you prefer for yourself. So you can change colors as often or as little as you wish. All I'm just doing now is just weaving in some of the edges or some of the string here and then when I crochet the next layer it's gonna trap that into position and you won't even see it. So I can safely trim that now and move on to round number three. So round number three is gonna have one color on its own before we change it again in round number four. So I'm starting off a green here and I started off with a slip knot and I wanna come to at least one of them. It doesn't matter which one you're going to start with but you have to come to a top of a double crochet. And just insert your hook in and just yarn over both of the straggler and the yarn leading to the ball. Pull through to lock it into position. Make sure you get both of those strings when you go over. Let me try that again. Okay, so you go in, just put both of them together, pull through so they come together and then through. That locks that into position. And what I need you to do at this point is that I need you to chain three. So just taking the straggler just for one more time, just take it through plus the yarn and just go one and now let it, that straggler fall out of the way, two and three. Therefore you can cut the string and not have to worry about kind of uh, putting it in. So in the spaces, the chain one spaces, you're going to put two double crochets. So one and two. And then in the top of the next double crochet it's just gonna be one double crochet on its own. So the repeat pattern on this is in the chain one space you're gonna put two double crochets. So one and two. And then in the next double crochet is just one. Please do that same thing going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around. I'm following that same procedure of two double crochets in a chain one space and then one double crochet in the one double crochet. 
So we're gonna have uh, chain one space as your final. So there'll be two double crochets because when we joined, we joined it on top of a double crochet which is the next one here. So when we go to a slip stitch, we wanna slip stitch to the top of the chain three and I need you to break this yarn. So it says to break, and just really means to fasten off. Weave in your ends once again and let's change our color to something different. So let's continue to move along in this project and I'll show you the next step. So we're now here on round number four and round number four is kinda weird but we need to create the foundation for which round number five sits on top of. So there's gonna be a lot of chain work. So you can see that there's consistency of the chains. You have chain two here, you have chain three here, chain two, then a corner, chain two, chain three, chain two, then a corner. And so what we need to do is that we need to get our bearings to where we're starting which is right here. Okay, and then we're gonna work our way around and do this nice and slowly so that when we do round number five, all of the spaces are there and ready for us at that time. So let's begin round number four and let's start off with a slip knot and we need to get our bearings first. So we need to know exactly where we are. So we just finished off here. So you can start anywhere on this particular project. What you want to look for is that you want to start right above a double crochet. So it's gonna be one of these that are by themselves. So do not start so that you have one of them is inside of a chain one space. So it can be any one of the double crochets that are sitting by themselves. Let's just join it, the yarn on. Put the yarn over and through to attach. Okay and I want to chain one first. So we're just gonna chain one and it says to single crochet into the same space. So now we're ready to begin and this is our starting point. So let's go nice and slow together and I'll show you. So currently there's a typo on the pa pattern at this point and it says to chain five, slip stitch fifth chain from the hook. That means that it takes you back to the center. So you need to actually chain seven. Okay, so this is a typo here. So you want to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and counting back to the fifth. So going one, two, three, four, and five. You want to slip stitch into that chain just like this and then chain two. So one and two and we will cover this again and what this is doing is creating a loop on the outside. So now you have to skip to the next double crochet that's by itself. So you can either count over okay or just look to where you're seeing it. So all of the stitches all the way around when they attach back to this ring will always attach to the double crochets that are sitting by themselves. They'll never attach to anything that's in between in the chain one space. And so we're gonna single crochet into the next double crochet that sits by itself. Now you're going to chain two, one and two and skip over and go to the next double crochet that's sitting by itself. Now you're going to chain three. So one, two and three and skip and go to the next double crochet that's sitting by itself. So that was the halfway spot on a corner or sorry on an edge. So then we're making our way to the other side of the corner. So it's gonna be opposite to what you see here. So the next one will be chain two and skip to the next double crochet that sits by itself and now we're ready for another corner. So remember what we did before. We chained seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and just come back and just you can either look for the third one up or just count. So one, two, three, four and five. Okay, so that's up to you how you want to do it. You're gonna chain two and then skip and go to the next double crochet that's sitting by itself. So now we're going to chain two, go to the next double crochet that's sitting by itself, chain three, one, two and three and come to the next double crochet that's sitting by itself. Chain two, one, two, next double crochet that's sitting by itself and you're ready for another corner. So another corner one more time is chaining is seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and just go to the fifth one back or look for the third one up. It's up to you and how you wanna do that. Chain two and go to the next double crochet that's sitting by itself. Please do that same pattern and going all the way around and this is what it looks like at this point. So coming up all the way back around the last one is a chaining of three 
and I'm just going to join it to the first single crochet. Do not fasten off your yarn at this time. It, it wants you to keep the same color going so no matter what your color scheme is it's up to you. If you want to fasten off it's up to you as well. So let's uh, begin. We're going to move on to round number five. So let's begin to move on to round number five. So we have to get all the way to this little loopy space that you see over here in the corner and to do that we just have to insert our hook in, yarn over and pull through and that's a slip stitch to begin. We're now going to chain three. So one, two and three and we wanna do four double crochets into that same loop space. So one, two, three, and four. Just like that. So with the chaining of three that you started off with plus these four double crochets it gives you a total count of five double crochets. You now want to chain three. So one, two and three and coming into the same loop we need to do the other side of the corner and it's five double crochets. So one, two, three, four and five. So now that we have our corner done you see it's done like that. Like that. Now, so now we want to single crochet in the next chain two space. Okay so now we're in the center of a side. So in the center we put in five double crochets. So just immediately start. So one, two, three, four and five which makes this a very easy round to follow because you got like fives on the sides here and then you got fives in the centers. You're going to single crochet into the next chain two space and then immediately start and do a corner here. So we just reach over and we just double crochet right into the corner loop and we want to do five double crochets. So one, two, three, four and five. You're now going to chain three. One, two, three and then five double crochets into back into that same loop to turn the corner. So that was two, three, four and five. We want to single crochet into the next chain two space and then you're in the middle of a, of a side again so it's five double crochets. So continue that same path going all the way around. So two, three, four, five and single crochet into the next chain two space and then do your corner again. So you just reach over inside the loop five double crochets, chain three, five double crochets and then work your way around. So this is what it looks like at this moment. So I'm coming around to the final side and I just have to single crochet into the first one and then just do a slip stitch and join it to the top of the first chain three of the first corner like this. So we want to break our yarn at this point. We want to fasten this yarn off and we're going to move to one more color that is going to do the next two rounds and those are the final rounds of doing the granny square itself. So the first round around is just basically a foundation uh, to hold all of the additional final round and that will make sense in just a moment. So when we come back let's uh, grab up some yarn. Um, the, if you really looked at your squares too as well you'll notice that the final round matches the same color as the center and I think it brings nice balance by doing so but again this is your creativity. You can decide what you like for yourself. Next round is number six. Number six we're going to create a foundation of all these chains so that the round number seven the final can all sit nicely within that. So we have to create all these gapping spaces in chain work in order to do so. It's a relatively quick uh, spin around and then the final round then will be in balance after that. So let's begin round number six. Let's begin round number six. I'm gonna create a slip knot. I'm gonna use the same color as the interior of the inside of the square of the square. So I want to join it to a chain two space or a chain uh, a three space that's in the corner here and I want to just go right into a space and just put the straggler over and join like I have been all along. I want you just to drop the straggler out of the way at this moment and just grab the yarn that's going to the ball. Chain up one like this and single crochet back into that same spot. 
So in the corners what we have to do is we have to chain three. So one, two, three coming back into the same space single crochet. So now we're gonna move along the edge just like this. So the first one is a chaining of five. So one, two, three, four and five and we want to double crochet ourselves to the next single crochet that's right here. So we're gonna double crochet into that spot. We're now going to chain three, one, two and three and join it to the middle one of the five. Okay, so you see the five double crochets go right to the middle one for a single crochet. You need to chain three, one, two and three and double crochet to the next chain one space or sorry next single crochet that's available to you. Now we have to chain five and get ourselves back to a corner. So one, two, three, four and five coming into the next corner single crochet chain three. One, two, three single crochet back in. So let's just do one more side together. So here it, here it goes. We're gonna start off and we're going to chain five. So one, two, three, four and five coming to the next single crochet for a double crochet. We're then going to chain three. One, two, three. Look to the middle one of the group of five and it'll be the middle one and it's a single crochet. Chain three. One, two, three. Double crochet to the next single crochet and then head to the next corner. So it's five. So one, two, three, four, five corner, single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, single crochet back in. So please do that same configuration going all the way around. So I'm coming up to the final where I'm gonna run back into a corner and just continue the same path. So one, two, three, double crochet into the next single and then the final is chaining of five. So one, two, three, four and five. One, two, three, four, Five, and I want to join it to the beginning single crochet. So just with a slip stitch to the beginning like so. So I've now gone all the way around. This is what it looks like. Let's move on to the final round, round number seven. So round number seven is really easy. We're just going to slip stitch to the next chain three space which is the very corner and we want to chain three which counts as a double crochet. So one, two and three and we wanna double crochet two more times into that same space. One and two. So with the chaining of three plus these two this equals three double crochets. So we need to turn a corner accurately so we need to chain two and then double crochet three more times into that same space. So one, two and three. So we're going to move all the way across. So we're going to only play within the chain spaces. We're not gonna play within the double crochets or the single crochet spaces. So the first one is going to be five double crochets sitting right in the space. So one, two, three, four and five. We jump to the next chain three space and there will be three uh, double crochets there. So one, two and three. So if you always remember, remember we did chaining of fives and chainings of three. It just matches the same thing that's already there. So the next one we just jump to the next space and there will be three double crochets there. And that was a chain three space so therefore this time it's double crochet three times. The next chain five space there's going to be five double crochets. So one, two, three, four and five and then we jump to the outside here. So in the outside there's always gonna be the same thing. It'll be three double crochets. So one, two, three, chain two and then three more into that same space to turn the corner. So please do that same configuration going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around and I'm almost finished. I'm on the final chain five space so it'll be five double crochets here. So it's two, three, four and five. So you're just gonna finish this off with just chaining or sorry just a uh, slip stitch. So the top of the beginning chain three and then just fasten this off weaving your ends nicely and this is what this square 
would look like and it's an amazing little square. You can use it for this uh, particular afghan that we're doing or you could even use this particular square to make a multiple of squares in order to do a multiple granny square afghan as well. So let's uh, move on to the next part of this tutorial. So let's move along in this tutorial. So we're now going to create the stripes from two sides going all the way down to the base and then two sides all the way going to the top. So we have to do one at a time. So here we see rows from one to twenty-five here. Every other row is single crochet and every other row compared to that is double crochet just like you see here on the pattern. So you can change the colors as often as you wish. This has a color mix that the designers has figured out for you to create a really amazing look. It's up to you. So on the ones that are going up from here all the way to the top it's rows one through twenty-five repeated four times. So this is one time and then this is four times. So you can get a good uh, idea. So for the crochet cruises what we're doing is we're only doing one through twenty-five down here and then one through fifty up here. So just one through twenty-five twice in order to create a little cute little afghan and we're only gonna put so many stripes together as well. We're not gonna do the whole thing. So this is a really great idea. So when we go to look at the pattern here we just see that it's uh, gonna start off with a single crochet to start us off and then we're going to then start and work our stripes out just like this and it's the exact same thing on the other side. So once you understand this so it's just it's a double crochet uh, single crochet double crochet single crochet and that's all it is. You just have to watch yourself on the corner uh, for when you're going all the way around and watch how you start in order to keep it in balance. So let's begin to do that part next. Let's start row number one of doing the stripes. So we're gonna just do one side only and what we're going to do is that it doesn't matter which side you pick it's a square. So you can just go into a chain two space and just insert your hook yarn over and attach like so and you are going to chain one like this and single crochet back into that same spot. So we've now just joined. So all you just need to do is that you just need to single crochet along in every stitch all the way to the next corner. So just remember this first one here if you're going in the space don't forget just follow these up okay and then just go in. So single crochets so I don't even need to count. I just gotta look for all the single crochets as I'm going across. See how I'm burying the string as I go so therefore I won't have any loose ends hanging out. So just go right over top of the string like this. So let's just single crochet ourselves to a corner. So I'm not going in any chain spaces or chain gap spaces, nothing. I'm just going in absolutely into every stitch. So round, uh, row number one is different from the rest of the rows when we go to do this because there is a chain space in the corner and that chain space will not appear anywhere after this once we get this row done. Okay, so in the chain space here we are going to put in, uh, what do we got here? We're gonna put in three double cro or single crochets. So the first one so one, two and three and then you just come and start again. So just single crochet across. So we're gonna row number one we're just establishing everything just like this and we're going to put in one single crochet in the final chain two space that exists before we turn around and start heading back in the other direction. So we're not going all the way around. We're just doing two sides only and building our way up. Okay, so I'm hitting the next space in just a moment. So in the final space, chain two space is just one single crochet. So you can change colors as often or as little as you want. I'm gonna keep the same color just to make it easier. I'm going to turn the work and I'm going to begin row number two which will be a repeat um, for all of the different uh, uh, every other row. So here's how we're gonna do it. So how we start when we do the double crochets is exactly identical each and every time. So what we're going to do is that we're going to chain three. So one, two and three and we come to the next stitch here and we want to do two together. So how you do that is that you wrap the hook going into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, pull through two and hold and do it again. So you yarn over going into the very next stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold. You will now have three loops on your hook. 
yarn over, pull through all two, all three, sorry. So those two stitches just became one and we need to do that one more time. So yarn over into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold. Yarn over, next stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold. You now have three loops back on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. So these just became narrow and the reason for it is that we need to maintain this edge that goes up through the stripe. So now the remainder of the stitches all the way to the very corner is just gonna be double crochets. So let's just double crochet into each one. And what we need to pay attention to is where we are on a corner. Now it does give a hint that maybe you should uh, have a stitch marker in the corner um, to help you determine that but if you're an experienced crocheter you probably do not need to do that. Okay, so just double crochet across. So basically every other row you get a nice break with this double crochet to give you some um, distance. And then the other ones are single crochet which gives you nice accenting stitch work. Okay, so I'm gonna look for the third one. So there's three uh, single crochets in the corner and the middle one here is the middle. So I wanna look for that one when I get there. Okay, so I got one more to go because that's not the middle one, this next one. So on the middle ones, whenever you're double crocheting on the middle stitch of the three single crochets, there's gonna be five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And now we're just going to double crochet ourselves all the way to the next side. But let me show you how to finish the side because it's kind of like how we did it in the start where we had to eliminate some stitches with doing two togethers. So we have to do that in the final stitches as well. The nice thing about this particular project is that the strips never get bigger in the sense of more stitch work. It just is a matter of just working your way down. Okay. Okay, so what we wanna look for is that we wanna look for the final stitches and we need to look for the final four stitches in order to do this properly. So the final four stitches gives you an indication on where you need to go. So I got one, two, three, and four. So the, the final four stitches are gonna be two togethers and watch how it's done. So you got four left on your here. So just yarn over, pull through, pull through two and hold. Next stitch, pull through all three. And then the final two stitches do the same thing and then that finishes that off just like that. So you just have to turn your work and continue to work your way up in doing the stripe heading in the other direction. So I'm going to just fasten this yarn off just because I can and I'm gonna just do another color and I'll show you how to start the single crochet once again because it will be slightly different uh, because uh, you're not on the edge of the granny anymore. So we just have to make sure you're watching for your stitches. Uh, just very easy, it's just a matter of knowing what to look for and let's pick up another color. So let's just grab another color and we're just going to single crochet. You can change colors as often as or as little as you wish. You wanna come into the very first. Now when you're doing this you gotta watch because you put two together here. So the two will come into one here and that's what you need to look for. Okay, so just make sure you are paying attention to that and you wanna join it like so. Okay, you're going to chain one and you wanna do two together and in the single crochet we only do it once. So here we did two together twice. In the single crochets you only do it once. So just coming into the same stitch, pull through and hold. Coming into the next stitch that's available to you, pull through and hold and then just yarn over, pull through all three. So these two just became one. So you're just gonna single crochet yourself now to the new corner. So how do you identify the new corner now? Is that when you get to the single, or the double crochets, there's five of them. The middle one of the five will get three double, or single crochets in it. So the middle gets three. Okay, so you, did you see me burying my yarn as I went? It just is a lot easier. You don't have to deal with tails. 
So just single crochet yourself across. So as you guess, we only had uh, two together just one time at the start of this row. So therefore at the end of the row, the final two stitches will come together as two together single crochets. So the key element is to really keep an eye on where your corner is for when the, you got the point going down. like this. Okay, so you got your five here. So just look for it. So one, two. So the next one is my middle one and there will be three single crochets in that space. So I can turn the corner and then just single crochet to the other side. So once you understand the corner and how to stop and start each one of the of the two different rows that you have, it becomes a really quite an easy project to be able to master. Most people when they do this kind of project, they get hung up on the sense of not starting right and so they end up gaining stitches at the end and sometimes they don't actually even get the middles of their points and so their points then become offset. So it's just a matter of identifying where your stop and start is. Okay, so the stopping start just like you see here, when we go to look at it here is that this, the, the final two is this one that came, okay. The, you see the two together and the final chain. So those are the ones that are two together. So it's the top of it where the two are plus the chain is your final. So when you go to start your next round, so this is a repeat of round number two. Okay, so you start off and you chain three, one, two, three. Okay, the next two are together. So this is your double crochets once again. Then the next two are together. Like so and then double crochet yourself all the way and to the point the middle one of the three will get five double crochets and then go to the other side and then the final two stitch, uh, final four stitches will come together so you have two and two and then you can either change your colors or just keep the color it's up to you on uh, what you want to do for these kind of uh, projects. So this is how you would do this particular afghan. It's called granny with radiant stripes. Relatively easy and it's a lot of fun and really there's not a lot to it when you really break it down step by step. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day.